we request the following dignitaries to take their space on stage. Mr. T. S. Krishnamurti, former Chief Election Commissioner of India. Dr. K. Lakshmanadas, founder and chairman, Santa Beautiful World. Mr. Sandeep Pai Rathor, IPS Commissioner of Poli. Mr. Amrish Pujari, IPS, DGP Prisons. Rear Admiral Ravi Kumar Dehra, Flag Officer Commanding, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry Naval Area. Mr. Sathya Brata Sahu. The Prince of Akka, Nawab Zada Mohammed Asif Ali, Founder Trustee, Art of Foundation. Mr. Tamari Kannan, IPS Retired Commissioner of State Information, Tamil Nadu and former ADC Law and Order. Mr. T. S. Krishnamurti to garland the portrait of Sri T. N. Seshan and pay his respects. Felicity, the esteemed dignitaries on and off stage. I invite Dr. Lakshmanatas, founder, chairman, Sankal Beautiful World, to present a shawl and a memento to Mr. T. S. Krishnamurti, former uh, Chief Election Commissioner of India. Pujari, IPS, DGP presents. Sir, we request you to again present the memo. Rear Admiral Ravi Kumar Dingra, Flag Officer Commanding, Tamil Nadu Kuduchin Naval Area. Retired Commissioners of State Information, Tamil Nadu. Now I request Professor Dr. D. Vishwanathan, Vice Chairman Sankal, to present the memento and the show. She should have mentioned cross to her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is our country. Prince of Akka, Nawab Zata, Mohammed Asif Ali, 
is being presented with a shawl and a magnet rope. Actually, since he didn't come, meaning <laughs> suffered. Mr. R. P. Krishna Machari, founder and chairman, Tex Biosciences Private Limited. Twenty-five crores. Yeah. Sai Dorai Sami, former mayor of Chennai. Very good evening to all of you. I'm indeed delighted to be here in the midst of very dignified and digni uh, very respectable persons in Tamil Nadu, starting with Mr. Amarish Pujari, Rear Admiral Ravi Kumar, Dingra, Mr. Satyabhuta Sathiv Sahu has not come, Mr. Arul Raj, Mr. Aravindan, Mr. Tamarai Kannan, Dr. K. Lachman Das, Professor D. Viswanathan, Dr. Arvind Krishnamurthy, Mr. R. P. Krishnamachari, Thir Saidai Duraswami, Prince of Arkat, Nawab Zada Muhammad Asif Ali, oh sorry, yeah. Dr. Subhash Rao, General Physician of Mr. T. N. Session, Dr. Rajiv yes. Rajan Ravi Chandran, and so on, and Dr. Raj Kumar. Let me say that how delighted I am to participate in this function. Mr. Session was indeed a legend in the, in the administrative scenario of this country. First, I must make a correction. I think Sri Vidya mentioned that I belong to the IAS. 
I do not. Mm -hmm. I belong to the Indian Revenue Service. IRS. You probably you know those odd men who came into the election commission. <laughs> uh, just because I was secretary to the government of India in the Department of Company Affairs. And just probably because I became an election commissioner because I fought with my minister for a long duration. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, when I, when I read Mr. Session's book, he was mentioning about his own appointment. Very interesting similarities between him and me. He, his full name is Tirunelai Narayanai Ayer Session. I belong to Tirunelveli. Tirunelai is another name for Tirunelveli, of course, but Tirunelai is in Kerala now. He had a problem with his date of birth. I believe one of his classmates I know who was in Delhi, he used to be very mischievous. And his parents wanted to put him in the school even when he was around three or three and a half years. So they went to the school, local school there in Palgar. And the teacher said he cannot be admitted unless his age is so and so. so they found a suitable date and he was upgraded in age. He was admitted in the school. I was also given a wrong age to get admitted in my school in Tirchirapalli. He was born in May, I was born in May. His wife was a Veena player, my wife was a Veena player. And uh, <laughs> we had um, a lot of time spent in Delhi when I was there. I spent about nearly 23 years of my career in Delhi. Very unusual, but then I did. One of the things I remember distinctly about Mr. Session is frequently used to tell me I'm a frog in the well, I do not know what is happening. So I used to ask him, why do you put yourself as a frog in the well? You know everything and you are well known, others know you so well. And I don't think you should say that you are a frog in the well. As I went through his book, which is beautifully written, very lucidly written, and I think the compliment goes to Mr. Nixon for ensuring that it was properly edited. And uh, some of the statements he makes is very frank. One particular statement he has made in his book is about his confidential role. Mr. When he was in atomic energy, Mr. N.J. Setna, who was there in the, election, in the atomic commission, succeeding Mr. Vikram Sarabhai wrote in his fear an abrasive, an aggressive and a bully. That's what <laughs> was written about him. I think he was in the cadre of a director at the time. He was very much worried about this adverse remark as he thought. He wrote to the cabinet secretary objecting to these remarks by Mr. N.J. Saad now he thinks these remarks were written because there was a difference of opinion between Mr. Vikram uh, Sarabhai and Mr. Uh, Setna. Be that as it may, what is more interesting is the interesting anecdote that he had with Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister. When he wrote this representation, the minister concerned was the Prime Minister and she asked him to come to Delhi. Atomic Energy Post was in Bombay. So, the first thing Madam Indira Gandhi asked him was, are you a bully? Are you an aggressive person? Are you an abrasive person? Because he flatly denied all these allegations and said, yes, I am in a way abrasive or aggressive only when the work is not done. I get my work done. <laughs> and I am a bully to those who do not work and so on. Mr. Gandhi looked at him with some kind of a, uh, you know, uh, curiosity. Then he said, call that man inside. He was wondering who was that. And it was Mr. N.J. Setna who came in. And Mr. Session standing in the room, wanting to find out what, is, what more is going to happen because he thought that was the end of his career and that he might not get his promotion as a joint secretary. Then as Mr. Setna walks into his room, Mrs. Gandhi looks at Session. These are described in his book with some kind of a content, why he was standing there. So he said, I got the message, I got out of the room, and whatever transaction took place between Mr. Setna and Gandhi is of course not there. He thought, he thought that after this interview, he was not going to 
get any further important posting in the government. But surprisingly, after 10 days, he got a letter from the cabinet secretary that the adverse remarks had been expunged. This actually gives an insight into this man. He's very assertive. He's very uh, bold in whatever he says. And he's very clear in his mind. There's no ambiguity in his thinking. There are many instances which he has referred in this book. How long should I keep talking about 10 minutes? Or? Because I can talk about him for more than an hour. <laughs> but what is uh, significant is the contribution he made to the election commission. I think Radha Krishna is coming. Come, come. come. Oh, perfect level there. The corporation commissioner will always be busy. <laughs> Mr. Session made a significant contribution to the Election Commission. Although he has worked in this Tamil Nadu cadre, then Madras cadre, in particular, he was when he was Madurai collector, he had to take charge of Sheikh Abdullah who was in uh, house arrest in Kodekanal. He has played more than is an um, active role in the Tamil Nadu cadre. I think he's more remembered for what he did in Delhi, both in the Space Commission, Atomic Energy, and then later on as an election commissioner. Very interestingly uh, recalled the details. When he was informed that he was going to be the election commissioner, he felt that that's a job not cut for him. He was consulting a few people. Here again, there is a similarity between my appointment and Mr. Session's appointment. When I was called by the principal commissioner, principal secretary to the prime minister, Mr. Brijesh Mishra, saying that how about becoming an election commissioner? I said, I'm, are you sure I am the right person for this job? <laughs> Mr. Session seems to ask the same question. And he felt that the job in the election commission is, was only for a one hour or so, and that he will be a misfit in the election commission. And of course, he also refers to Dr. Subramanian Swami asking him to take up this job. And they were good friends. They were in Harvard together. And uh, he consulted quite a few people before expressing his acceptance, including the Kanchi Mahaswami, Mr. R. Venkatraman, and so on. As far as I am concerned, I did not consult anybody except my wife. <laughs> because when it was offered to me one month earlier, my wife saw Mr. G.B.D. Krishnamurti walking in the Delhi airport with all the security. And she asked me whether you will not get a job like this after your retirement. I told her, certainly not. <laughs> or I told him this job, normally a person from the IAS or from the law ministry gets it. And I don't stand any chance of becoming election commissioner of India. But I don't know whether it was her expectation that got me the job. And suddenly one day, Mr. Bridesh Mishra called me and said, how about taking up this job? I told him, I thought the rumors in the government was that I was to become chairman SEBI because I was the secretary department of company at past. He said, no, the chairman SEBI is getting an extension and we have decided to offer this to you. I said, on what basis, I asked him. Mr. Brijesh Mishra. He said, the way in which you have handled the politicians, it was very impressive because I fought with my minister, as I told you. And uh, the, I thought when once the prime minister called me about my, during my fight with the minister, he asked me, uh, was this minister making money? He asked me. I said, sir, I didn't see him making money, but I have strong reasons to believe that he was making money. <laughs> and when I told him, here again I thought, I told the Prime Minister at the time, Mr. Vajpayee, I know he is a member of the coalition government, and I know that how important it is for you to retain him in your cabinet. You can transfer me if you wish. And if you do not find a slot for me because I did not belong to the IAS, 
I am willing to put in my papers. He said, no, the minister will go, you will continue. That's how I probably impressed the Prime Minister. And I was called to take up this job. And I told at that time, Mr. Brijesh Mishra, I have never done an election duty. So also Mr. Session says, I have never done directly any election work except as a collector of Maguri for a short while. But Mr. Session was a different kind of man. I don't think I can ever compare myself with him. His style was different. And um, he had many challenges before him. In fact, when I went through his performance and the book, I have earlier made an observation in my own book. If ever the history of election commission is written in this country, it has to be divided in two parts, the pre-session period and the post-session period. <laughs> Although he had his own angularities, about which I don't think there is any doubt about. But his sincerity, his commitment and his courage need to be applauded. There are occasions when he had to fight with the state government, fight with the central government. Particularly, he narrates in detail the fight regarding the introduction of the identity cards. Two, th two or three state governments were unwilling to cooperate. He fixed up a date, 1st January 1995. All elections will be conducted only with identity cards. And the state government should issue the identity cards. Wherein, of course, he refers to his relationship with Mr. Lalu Prasad Yadav and a few others how they were not at all keen to introduce the, the identity card. Very interestingly, the matter went up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court stayed because there was a, he had made a statement, no ID card, no election. Yes. And uh, the politicians in general and the chief, three chief ministers in particular said, how can he override the provisions of the constitution? The dates, elections have to be held are fairly determined in the constitution and he cannot go beyond that. He cannot say I will not hold the elections. I don't know but he has not mentioned about it. There is one loophole. The election can be postponed after notifying. So it is even though the constitution does not give you the power to extend the period of the, the tenure of the house and delay the election but you can notify the election and then postpone it. Any, any period for a bit of time that is allowed as per the provision of the representation of People's Act in the Constitution of India. He did mention about that, but anyhow, the point is the Supreme Court was, he, was very critical of uh, the, gun, uh, the petitions made about his uh, adamant attitude to hold on to the uh, identity card project. For example, Maharashtra completed the project well ahead of time. Mr. Sharad Pawar was the chief minister at that time, I believe. And he said, if Sharad Pawar could do that, why not other states? But you know, states differ in governance style. And uh, one of the states, Bihar, I think Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal, they did not take this job seriously at all. And the Supreme Court asked him to go ahead with the election extend the due date because Mr. Sessions had given 18 months time to introduce the ID cards. But unfortunately, these three uh, states and a few more states did not comply with this. Most of the states, of course, had completed, introduced their election identity card to the extent of 70 to 80 percent. But be that as it may, he stood his ground, but he felt very bad that the Supreme Court interfered with his direction. He could have easily implemented. The other important event I think I, before that I'll refer to one or two other things which I have marked. Is this my book? Hmm. One I had yes. no, folded the pages. Okay. No. no. I had a paper. Oh, here it is. Sorry. Also fold it. You have to remember the number. The most controversial period of his uh, 
assignment in the election commission was regarding the appointment of two election commissioners. I don't know how many of you know the full story. Mr. Session, when he was appointed as a chief election commissioner, he started asserting from day one. In fact, when he said that I thought I didn't have any work in the election commission, I realized that it gave me a plenty of opportunity to work, find areas of reform and so on. So when the two election commissioners were appointed, the rationale behind this appointment was that Mr. Session was uncontrollable and he was interfering with every decision. One of the important incidents was that Mr. Narasimha Rao, as the Prime Minister, announced the date of the election. Mr. Session said nothing doing, he cannot announce. And he announced this during one of his foreign trips that he will hold the election in a particular, on a particular day, in a particular month. He said he, the same day he went on to the national television channel and said, I cannot hold the election as per the desire of the Prime Minister. The Election Commission is given, given the authority by the Constitution to make full arrangements and be satisfied to ensure that it is a free and fair poll. And this is one of the important decisions we took which had a, a long-standing effect because even today, we do not allow, we do not consult, we do not take instructions from the government on fixing the schedule of the elections. We do consult the Home Secretary regarding the deployment of forces. We do consult the Chief Secretaries of various state government. We take a decision, but we do not go by any indication of the government. And this is a, a significant um, change he brought about the right to schedule the elections. The second important thing, as I told you, is about the identity cards. It was welcomed by the people, but the politicians did not welcome it, particularly in some states. And um, even here, though he had obstacles, in fact, he, at one stage he makes a statement. He says, so long as Justice Ankita Chalaya was the Chief Justice of India, most of the decisions on election matters were favorable to the Election Commission. But he was succe succeeded by Justice Amidya. And thereafter, no decision was in favor of the Election Commission, except in one case where the Chief Justice did not, did not sit in the bench, very humorously sit there. <laughs> but there has always been a tug of war between the judiciary and the government but, and the Election Commission on various matters. But I must say, in fairness, that many of the reforms that have come into the election management has not been due to the government, but it is due to the intervention of the judiciary, particularly the Supreme Court. Many decisions which we have been asking the government to carry out. One of the reasons why the, why the election reforms are not carried out by the government is the fact that most of the political parties are not interested in election reforms. They are very happy with the status quo because it permits all sorts of machinations, all sorts of mischiefs to be practiced. Although many of them have been checked, I still believe there are areas where it is possible to improve the purity of the election if some of the reforms are brought about. The fight between the election two election commissioners and Mr is historic. First of all, the Constitution talks about the only Chief Election Commissioner who is removable only by the impeachment process, but it talks about regional commissioners. There has, no, there has never been a regional commissioner in India. The purpose in the Constitution, uh, Constitution Assembly discussion was to appoint temporarily regional commissioners whenever elections are held in a particular state, if there is any need, and they will exit from their office as soon as that election is over. But this provision has not been changed. It continues to be in the Constitution of India. But then, when Mr. Session started asserting himself, Mr. Narasimha Rao wanted an alternative, a check on him, and he brought a law to bring two election commissioners. One of them was his 
very close friend and a classmate, having my own, my name, Mr. G. V. G. Krishnamurti and Mr. Gill, S. S. Gill. There has been, first they were given the rank of a High Court Judge, whereas the Chief Election Commission had the rank of a Supreme Court Judge. So he said, I am the senior, I will overrule their decisions. They cannot dictate terms to me. Of course, there are many other complaints about which Mr. Does not, Mr. Session does not write, but Mr. G. V. G. Krishnamurti and Mr. Gill have mentioned about, and they took it up to the Supreme Court, how they, they were not treated properly and so on. We will not go into that. But the essence is Mr. Session was very keen to ensure that the, only the Chief Election Commissioner had the authority to take decisions. I think somewhere, I'll read out his um, comments. Very, very interesting. I emphasize that the position of the CEC under the Constitution is not primus inter paris, that is the first among equals, but is intended to be placed in a distinctly higher position. I also said that I, in any event, do not admit that the Election Commission is a collective constitutional authority. I also do not admit that the principle of majority can prevail in the scheme of functioning of all such collective constitutional authorities. The position in law is that an election commissioner is not equal to the CEC. I said that the principle of majority as the basis for a democratic system, as has been advocated by Mr. Krishnamurti, that is G.V.G. Krishnamurti, in his affidavit was not universal and in fact it was not uniform to all the institutions. Even in this country, I also pointed out that the election commissioners were not intended to be a permanent part of the election commission of India. And this was clear from the proceedings of the Constituent Assembly. With all these arguments, unfortunately, the Supreme Court did not buy. In fact, Mr. Ramaswamy, the then Attorney General, and Mr. Palkiwala argued their cases. Because he goes in detail the hearings before the Supreme Court and all that, but I don't think I'll mention about it. But the Supreme Court, it did not sell with the Supreme Court and ultimately they gave a judgment saying that they should, they should compromise, they should have a consensus and they should go only by the majority. What is important was when the rank of a high court judge was given, he could overrule them. But the government came with an amendment and gave equal status to the remaining two election commissioners. In fact, Mr. Nixon, who was his research associate, he was discussing with me when he came to invite me and said, don't you think the single chief election commissioner is the best solution for this country? Well, you cannot expect every chief election commissioner to be a TN session. It could be a different person. <laughs> and you cannot think that everybody will take the same kind of bold and right decisions. They may also take wrong decisions. And I personally feel the three-member body is the right decision taken by the government. But Sometimes there will always be threat. We have, when we were in the election commission, we were told when we were taking certain decisions that they will expand the election commission to two more election commissioners so that they can probably have a decision more favorable to the government. But this is not, I won't, I won't advise expansion beyond three because practical administration may be difficult. And I can say with full confidence when we were there, Actually, I worked with Mr. Gill, later on Mr. Lingdo, and I became the Chief Election Commissioner. I had Mr. Tandon and Mr. Gopalaswamy as my colleagues. I had no difficulty in uh, running the Election Commission. Uh, true, there were certain areas where we had differences of opinion. So there were many challenges before us. But a uh, public institution involving the electorate of this country may not be always advisable to have only one chief election commissioner. It is all right. In the beginning, it was good. 
In fact, in my opinion, the first Chief Election Commissioner of India, Mr. Sukumar Sen, deserves to be given Bharat Ratana. He is the one who made many uh, remarkable initiatives to conduct the election where nearly 60 to 70 percent of the people were illiterate. That people didn't know what, is the, what was an election. In fact, the local media, media in this country, especially even the Hindu said it may become a failure. Sudesh Samitran, Hindu, and they all were very skeptical about the conduct of election. Mr. Sukumar Sen proved, although it took three months to complete the election process, they used to have separate box for each candidate in those days. From that to the electronic voting machine, the big chain. In fact, the electronic voting machine itself was introduced initially when Mr. Session and Mr. Gill were there. But it was not yet accepted. Still, one or two by elections and so on, they were holding it. When uh, in 2004, when I conducted the general election, we took a decision to extend the electronic, electronic voting machines for throughout the country. But the process of reforms were initiated by Mr. That was initiated by Mr. Session in a big way. He brought um, certain rules and regulations because there was a judgment of the Supreme Court. Mr. S. S. Gill versus Chief Election Commissioner of India. The Supreme Court said, when you conduct the elections, if there are legislative vacuums, the Chief Election Commissioner cannot throw his hands in despair and appeal to God. He has to take decisions so long as it is in consonance with the Constitution of India and the Representation of People's Act. This gave him the opportunity to introduce many reforms. And he did. There is no doubt about the fact that um, many changes, like, you know, the meetings in the rural areas could be up to 11 o'clock. In the urban areas, it could be up to 10, 10 p.m. and so on in the night. But these are welcome changes that he brought about. He brought about the poll observers for the various elections. He also introduced um, certain uh, enhanced the limits of the election expenditure. The election process management is an ongoing process and it needs more changes. We have, in fact, in, in 2004, I wrote to the then Prime Minister, Mr. Manmohan Singh, and I also personally called on him to take positive steps to improve the election process. <laughs> Unfortunately, the election process remains almost the same, except for some technological changes. And the election, elect, uh, for example, the electronic voting machine became a big controversy when I was there. And we threw it open to any person to come and challenge the, to improve the, in a, in a, in, in, uh, unacceptability or non-credibility of the voting machine. The, there are two persons who challenged it in the Supreme Court. One was Mr. Captain Amarinder Singh from Punjab and the other for former Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Madam Jailalitha. They went up to the court. They wanted to ensure that the electronic voting machines could not be accepted because they, were not, they could be interfered with. But the Supreme Court interfered and said, nothing doing, unless you prove to us our satisfaction. They threw, they asked them to prove it before them that the electronic voting machines could be manipulated. None of them could. And what is more interesting is in the following elections, both Madam Jailalitha and Captain Amarinder Singh won through the medium of electronic voting machines. <laughs> and thereafter, they didn't speak against this. <laughs> so there are many such challenges and I went, though I would have spoken a little more, but I thought there are a few others to speak. But at the end, I, I was just reading what he felt when he left the election commission. Because he was not very happy. In fact, he thought of resigning two months even before the due date of the retirement. And he didn't have very healthy relations with his colleagues at the time. And of course, I have met both of his colleagues, I've worked with them, one of them, and they had some strong difference of opinion. But the message that this book conveys is a government servant can bring about changes if he has got the will to do it, if he can find out the areas where the law permits him to do it. This is a management principle which I think he demonstrated that even within the existing provisions of law, 
lot of changes can be brought about. I think it's a big tribute to him that he brought about many changes, although he had his own critics, he was not happy with some of the judgments of the Supreme Court. He was also uh, having a, a tug of war with them, with some of the politicians, and he has referred to some of them. With all that, I think as an administrator, he did a good job, no doubt about that. And I think we need to remember him. We need to uh, uh, follow some of these steps in conducting the election process and even running a government office. This is where um, uh, Mr. Session distinguishes himself because before he joined the election commission, the election commission functioned almost as part of the Ministry of Law. For administrative purposes, election commission, the budget is voted through Ministry of Law. So when I met him, when I was selected, I met him. When I met him, I, he gave me an advice. If there is anything you have to deal with the government of India, don't write to any minister, law minister, or any minister. Write only to the prime minister. The second point he said, when you have your visiting card on your letterhead, don't say election commission, government of India. Say just election commission of India, because it's a constitutional authority, like the Supreme Court of India. And election commission is not part of the government. And this is where the um, uh, message goes across, uh, particularly the election commission and in the government, that they cannot be called down. And there have been many, many occasions, I don't think I'll spend more time on that, where even during sessions time and even thereafter, every election commissioner, if he doesn't want to toe the line of the government, he has challenges. But this is the only place where, even though he might have been a government servant, he can defy the executive action if it is not in accordance with the law. And I, I had off to him. I learned quite a bit from his experiences. And I can certainly say that by and large, there are criticism even today about the election commission. There are people who think that some areas it is still being man manipulated. But I would say, except maybe one or two abrasive inst in, uh, instances, the Election Commission has done a good job, thanks to the, the leadership provided by Mr. T. and Session. My greetings and best wishes to all those associated with the release of the book. I enjoyed reading it. And uh, I do hope, and one of the things which I wanted to say, I thought he might not bring some of, the, some of his views in spite of people criticizing him. Whether it is a Supreme Court judgment or a politician who differed from him, he has recorded it, and I'm glad that he did it. Although I also wrote a book, I didn't mention about any individuals with whom I had a lot of problems, both the politicians as well as uh, members of the bureaucracy. But he has mentioned the name, and he has also said that in spite of the difference of opinion, he had asserted his views and carried on his duties. I think uh, it's a book worth reading by everyone, including the civil servants, the civil servant aspirants, and I am sure that um, the legacy of session will continue. Thank you.